Hey Quilty friends, I'm Natalia Bonner and I'm excited to share this fun video with you today. So if you've been following me here on YouTube for a while, you know that most of the time I just share little sneak peeks, little snippets, hopefully to inspire you on your own machine quilting journey. But today I'm going to go a little bit more in depth and show you kind of what you could expect to see over on my Patreon page. So if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a platform where I am able to go a lot more in depth into my machine quilting process. So I walk you step by step through my process of machine quilting and deciding and everything right through a whole entire quilt. So a really great educational place and I hope that you'll find a little bit of that with this video today. So before we actually get to the video, um, part of why I'm so excited about this quilt and so excited to share it here with you, this quilt is a really simple patchwork quilt and I am excited to show you that just because a quilt is simple and it may feel like you know it just needs basic custom machine quilting you can really dress up a simple quilt and make it gorgeous and I feel like I was actually able to achieve that but still have it simple it's still really soft and cuddly and makes a great quilt okay so what are the products that I'm using on this quilt I'm using one layer of quilters dream wool batting I love that batting I do all my quilting on my gamel over there 22 inch machine the thread that I'm using on this quilt is so fine on the top by superior threads and then bottom line also by superior threads now I do have these products available for purchase along with a few thread clubs and lots of other fun things over on my website peaceandquilt.com so let's get to the video and I will walk you through my process so here's the quilt top before I begin any machine quilting you can see that it's a basic patchwork quilt super cute the prints are darling but it really could have some amazing machine quilting. The blocks are large enough that I can show something off in there. And in that negative sashing area, I can really add something to dress it up. So to be right out honest with how this quilt started, when I first looked at this quilt, the first thing that popped to me was the secondary kind of tees that are made with the sashing. And the first thing that came to my mind is, let's make each of those more like a flower. So whenever I decide that I'm going to do something like that, the first thing that I do is start to audition my curved rulers to fit in the spaces and see which shape or which size will work the very best. With this design, I started, I laid out my rulers and started auditioning and looking and seeing what would work best on this quilt. And I could not find a ruler to help me get that exact shape I wanted for this design. So I marked the design, how I thought I could quilt it a couple of different times, and it just wasn't working. It looked weird. It wasn't what I had in mind. So it was time to <laughs> change that plan and do something new. So I still went with a similar design to what I had originally planned, but this time I'm just going to work inside of the blocks and not try to extend into that small sashing portion. So what I eventually chose, and I'll show you a picture of it in just a second, is to do kind of an inside scallop border that would add a lot of curvature and still kind of play on that flower type motion or look that I wanted to play with. Now, the reason that I wanted to do something with the curved ruler so much and add that scallop in the prints, you can see there's some flowers that have a nice curve to them, a nice arc. And to me, if I can see a shape like that within my quilt top in the fabrics or things like that, then I really want to play with that and bring that into the quilt. The other thing, this is a client quilt and she, my client had asked me to quilt flowers in the center of each of the large blocks. So just playing off of the flowers, keeping it really soft and playing with the fabrics that are there. That's how I came to the conclusion to quilt the design that I chose. So this image right here is a photo of the block, of one block after the machine quilting was done. So what I was trying to explain, my original intent was that those curved scallop lines that I've quilted around the block, I wanted them to originally go into where the orange pill shape is and connect in there, but the shapes just weren't working out right. So I ditched that idea, treated those like a square with the melon in there and then use those scallops to frame the inside of the block really nicely. 
Now you will notice on this block, this is a corner or an outside block. So because of that, I chose to end the design and not have the scallops around the outside of the quilt. When it comes to binding a quilt and having a design like this, it can be a little bit tricky. So to eliminate the stress of creating that and having it go into the binding correctly, I decided to just leave the outside edges as they are here. Overall, it still looks really fabulous. So before I do start any of the machine quilting, my favorite marking tool is the blue Mark Be Gone marker. Now I do have these available for purchase on my website, peaceandquilt.com. With this particular design, because it is contained within a block, meaning the designs don't extend past my throat space on the long arm, I'll just do the marking after it's loaded on the machine. So I'm marking diagonal lines in each of the corners of my block. So this is giving me a nice reference when I go through and quilt those straight lines. And then I did mark X's through the centers of each of those background colored blocks where I will quilt the melons. If you are using the Blue Mark Vegan marker, I highly recommend, and I will post a link to this below, but make sure you check out my video where I show you how to easily remove those markings. All right, we're on to my favorite part, the machine quilting. I really love machine quilting. I'm sure that you all know that. So on this design, like I mentioned, I did audition rulers before I started my quilting. The curved ruler that I'm using for my scallops here is the number 10 by the Quilted Pineapple. Fabulous ruler. And then I'm also using my four in one machine quilting ruler for the melons and also for my straight line quilting. So I'm working with two different rulers here. So I'll begin stitching in the upper corner of the block and I'll work my way around stitching a melon. Then I'll travel my straight line stitching along the ditch. Then the next melon shape or curve, whatever you want to call that arc. It's a nice curve with the curved ruler. <laughs> then from there, I'll travel along, stitch the next curve and continue working my way all the way around the inside of that block until I've quilted one set of those curves all the way around. Now, after I've gone all the way around once, then I'll repeat that process, adding a second line of curves into that design. Now, you'll see this often in my machine quilting. I love to add that second curved line into there. The spacing on here is a quarter of an inch, but the reason that I like to add that curved spacing, that little spacer, that echo, whatever you want to call it, I like to add it because it gives a nice place for my eye to rest. If I were to quilt the straight lines that I'm going to quilt with these scallops, just a single scallop, it doesn't really give my place, my eye a place where I can just rest. I feel like there's just, it can become so busy and there's so much going on that there's never that place. Personally, I love the look of stitch in the ditch, so I will go through and stitch in the ditch. As you'll notice, there are a few places where I will stitch over my stitching line a couple of times. This is the reason, well, one of the many reasons why I love to use the so fine thread. It blends really nicely if I do have to stitch over a single point multiple times. I'm moving on as I fill in those straight back and forth lines, you'll notice that I'm using the blue marked reference lines to kind of create a miter in each of the corners. As far as the spacing goes with my machine quilting ruler, I am keeping my lines about a quarter of an inch apart. So I have a ruler foot on my long arm and I'm using the side of that as the guide. And my ruler at this point is more just a reference to keep my lines straight. It's not necessarily using for measurement, just something to help me keep my lines nice and straight. I'll work my way all the way around the block quilting that design. And this is the way that I really do quilt, that I quilt a whole entire block in this same pattern, just working one block at a time, moving my way throughout the quilt.
After I finish stitching all of those straight lines, then I will move on. Again, I love stitch in the ditch, so I will stitch in the ditch around the center block all the way around. After I've stitched all the way around that center block, then I'm going to stitch right into the center. With my machine quilting, I always try to do as much stitching as I can without stopping and starting. I feel like that's kind of one of my goals with machine quilting. I can still achieve fabulous results by stitching a line into that center. So to stitch out a flower in the center, I'll begin by swirling, stitching a swirl right in the center. After I've stitched that swirl, then I'll go through and quilt petals around the outside. Now you'll notice as I stitch these that I do try to keep them pretty even and consistent in size, but if I get to the end and there's still a space where I'm like, oh my gosh, it's too small, I can't fit another one in there, it will look kind of funny, then I'll just add a little leaf in there. By adding that little leaf in there, I feel like it helps it become even more realistic, creates a little bit of extra character and turns out really fabulous. You'll notice that I also did add echoes to the inside of my flower, just that extra element to add a little bit of extra gorgeous detail. Then I'll echo quilt all the way around the outside of that flower. I love the echoing on a block like this. It really helps the flower stand out and sets us apart from what's going on on the rest of the quilt. I'm just using the side of my foot as my guide for that echo quilting, so I'm keeping my lines pretty close to a quarter of an inch apart. Now notice, I'm not perfect. I'm not striving for absolute perfection on this quilt, so I'm okay if things are occasionally a little bit wonky or playful. As long as I'm really consistent and have a nice consistent result, I'm happy with that. As I move on, you'll notice that in my sashing, I will stitch those melon blocks using the smallest size on my four in one machine quilting ruler working my way around that block, and then I'll stitch ribbon candy in the sashing. Just a simple design. There's enough going on in the centers of these blocks that I want to keep this portion a little bit more simple. I don't want it to take away from what's going on on the quilt. And here is this gorgeous quilt all finished. Marissa did a fabulous job piecing this quilt and I really had fun quilting it for her. I hope that each of you were able to find a little bit of inspiration in my machine quilting. And like I mentioned, the products that I am using on this quilt are available for purchase on my website, pieceandquilt.com. Also, make sure you check out my Patreon page where I share a lot more videos like this 
every month that go more in depth into my process like I've done here today. Have a great day, everybody.